Okay. I'm Bill Dunn, and this is the Catalyst Sessions. This is our 40th show. If, uh, if I hear champagne corks popping and noisemakers, then I'll know that you're, you're with me on this one. Tonight's guests, I'm just going to introduce them, and they're going to entertain us. Please say hello once again to Paul Wilburn and Eugenie Bondurant. Howdy. Hello. Hey, guys. <clears throat> Hi, we're going to start off. That was beautiful, Phoebe. Thank you so very much. <laughs> I'm so glad to have you guys on here for our 40th show. Uh, when we started this, uh, you were the first people I wanted to talk to. And, and uh, here we are again. We are on it. We lived. Allow me to do my little introduction that I, that I done writ, OK? This is um, something I a little worked out. Paul Wilburn is a singer and musician, a well-loved public figure in St. Petersburg, and the longtime executive director of the Palladium Theater at St. Petersburg College. Now, Paul Wilburn is an award-winning journalist whose byline you might remember from the Tampa Bay Times and the long ago but not forgotten Tampa Tribune. His short story collection, Cigar City, Tales from a 1980s Creative Ghetto, was a gold medalist at the Florida Book Awards just three months ago, which is the last time we talked to him. That's the last time. It was March 25th, the very first editions of the Catalyst Sessions. Wow. And today, for our 40th show, we're thrilled to welcome back Paul Wilburn and his lovely wife, Eugenie Bondurant, who's equally howdy, prominent, howdy. Yes, in the St. Petersburg arts community. She is a former runway model, 
a singer, a voiceover artist, and a TV and film actor. You've seen her in The Hunger Games, Mockingjay, and soon she'll be back on the screen in Fear of Rain, filmed last year right here in St. Petersburg. She's also a New Orleans native, which is still three months later. Guess what? I still not been to New Orleans. But anyway, welcome you guys. <laughs> How you been? I'm glad you haven't been to New Orleans, actually. We've stayed so, away too. Yeah. We had to cancel in New Orleans. Yeah. Uh, well, everybody always tells me about the food and the music and the music and the food. It's, and fun. And it's all true. Yeah, it's a really great place. I mean, I don't need to go to Mardi Gras and stuff, but you know, <laughs> good jambalaya. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's really fun. Well, how are, anyway, how are you guys? It's been, well, three, it was three months yesterday. Really? Two months? Man. March, That's April. crazy. Is that March? Three months or two? Two months. Two months. No, well, okay. Months. So I'm not, I don't really know math. Okay. But. See, this is why we're in journalism, because math, right. the math part is so hard. Yeah, there are so many things I can't do. My, my brother-in-law was trying to teach me how to change a tire recently. And uh, <laughs> at 61, you think I would have learned by now. You look good. You look good. As we were saying before we came on, you, this is exactly where you were sitting the last time I talked to you guys. Exactly. And have you you I haven't gotten up and moved around? And we have not gotten, over. We have our food brought to us. And uh, I've actually been sitting here a lot because I've been getting a chance to practice the piano. That's kind of the, one of the nice things about uh, having a little extra yeah. time on your hand is you get to you get to practice your piano every day, which is what a good guy should do that's what we should do is practice every day that's true. are you uh yeah how do you get to carnegie hall uh, that's right practice, <laughs> practice. so i mean you you go off you go off for walks you go off are you bike riding times what do you guys do we're in a beautiful neighborhood but you know we're right on the bay here in lassing park and so we walk a lot i'm getting ten thousand steps a day figuring i'm trying not to gain too much weight with all the eating and hanging around <laughs> and uh, we've been riding bikes and kayaking and i've done some hikes and you know, usually just runs around and weight does not stick to her anyway. So, uh, you know, <laughs> it's true. we've been, we've been yeah. pretty active without really being that active. Makes sense. And I've been teaching actually, teaching online and oh. teaching Meisner acting and scene study over at Andy Matheny acting studios here in St. Pete. And it's been so much fun. From her fact, living room. From, uh, from my from living office. room, from my office. Uh, it's been on Zoom like we are today. And actually tomorrow is my last uh, online Meisner class. We started another one back up in June. Um, and it's been tremendous. How, it do, has how been do you do that though? More I mean, more what? How do, you, how do you do that? I mean, you focus now. Run that monologue again, Bob. I didn't really right. catch the nuance. I mean, it's, a, it's, not, it's not like you're in the room. How do you do that? Well, the good news for my scene study, from Meisner, Meisner is very intense and it's a yeah. you know, building block kind of uh randy meisner he was in the eagles wasn't he uh sorry i'm, so, I'm, so, uh, I'm sorry of course that you're scene about study that. what we're getting them to do is actually uh work on aircraft uh and taping themselves and a lot of the, a lot of some of the actors that come to us have no idea how to even start doing that so it gives it pushes them in the direction and then i'll look at the tape and i'll show it in class and you know online and i give yeah. them a critique right then and there and bill you know it's, it's interesting great. it's fun in these mm -hmm. times where people can't get out, they're actually wanting to better themselves, take yeah. classes. So yeah. they're actually enthusiastic about mm -hmm. online classes. And uh, it's been interesting. These are all adults who actually put the time in. I've been taking classes. They're taking classes for me. I mean, um, I'm a member of the Screen Actors Guild and SAG has, with the SAG Foundation, they have created all of these online workshops for voiceovers and actors and casting director seminars and talks with, you know, people and directors and producers. Yeah. And it's incredible the amount of content uh, to educate oneself that's been produced within the past two months. And I think it's, it's really interesting. A lot of people will say, well, you know, once this is all over, as we will be, whenever, um, you know, maybe a lot of people aren't going back, say, to the office and maybe a lot of activities that they've perfected doing online and have realized that they're beneficial will become the norm, you know? And isn't it true usually that, that film actors in particular, I've been watching the show Smash about Broadway, which has been, was on like two years ago. Oh yeah, yeah. We're right. binge watching it, but people send in video resumes now. You know, it's like, I have, an, I have an audition in New York, but I can't get to New York, I'll send you my video. Oh yeah, it's called a self-tape. We do it all the time, we've been doing it for years. Yeah. And now, 
um, the callbacks aren't in person anymore. They're on Skype or on Zoom. And really? so, and it's, it's great. I have a studio. Well, that's where I teach is in my studio and people, yeah. they don't come right now, but they come and I put them on tape and I upload the file and tweak it. And you're usually booked off of that self tape. It's great. Did the that industry have, changed so much. Yeah. Was that in effect before COVID-19, before the necessity yeah. of doing everything on tape? Yes, it, it's, been, it's been gaining in popularity over the past, what, five or six years, something like that. Her first look at, by the Hunger Games casting folks was yeah. on a self-tape. Self-tape, yeah. Fascinating yeah. stuff. Tell me about Castile Landon, um, ah, who wrote and directed Fear of Rain. She's <laughs> from Bradenton. I remember talking about it, and I've since read more about her in the film, but uh, she, she, she wrote and directed this film, and I can't, I don't even know how anybody gets financing for anything these days. Tell me about her. You, you told me once. She's kind of a medium, she's Bill, amazing. and she's young. As, she's really she's young. She's not even 30 or something. She's really yeah, very jealous. Yeah, her. she's this young, beautiful genius who graduated from high school early and then ended up going, what? Did she I, do Oxford? I, I, I thought it was Harvard Online while she was in Los Angeles. I, it just blows me away. She's the what, seeker of unnecessary degrees, she said, or something like that. It, it, she's <laughs> such a great I think director. that was a Moody Blues stuff. album title. Seeker I know, of unnecessary I know. Degrees. I know. <laughs> and her mom is a producer and a powerhouse and mm. uh, very caring the mother is, and so is Castile. You know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. It, it was great to work with her. And uh, I just have um, just wonderful memories of that. And well, this film we should tell folks, this film was shot. Okay, we can't say anything about that. Movie's but coming out there. Good, it's good news that's happening with that film, but I can't say anything about it. Oh, Still waiting oh, for the movie okay. theaters. That, uh, yeah. I can imagine that the good news, part of the good news is that yes, it's coming out, but um, just for those of you who don't know, it was shot here in St. Petersburg last year with Katherine Heigl and Harry Connick Jr. and you, right. and, and right. a young girl who I, I've read some more about it. Um, she's sort of a psychic, yeah? Isn't that the deal? She's, um, no, she's not, uh, she's got, um, she struggles with uh, mental illness and we follow her journey. We're in the journey with her. So it's, uh, oh. it's enlightening. Sort of a psychological yeah. thriller, a Bill. Psychological, psychological thriller. thriller. Okay, yeah. well, there you go. That's a, there you go. Another yeah. great moody book. It's a good script. No, it's a wonderful no. script. Seventh release. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> so I have something to tell about Paul. Oh, okay. Yeah, he finished. He's just at the very tail end. I think he just finished. Um, uh, going through the la uh, one of the last edits of your second book. The novel. So that's, yeah, no, the novel. I don't know if he mentioned that before. Came back from the editor. Yeah. I've had two editors read mm -hmm. it and just finished the book pitch, and we're going to try sending it off to some agents and see where it goes. Yeah. But uh, well, kind of, what, a, what a lovely segue. Tell, tell us about it. Uh, you know, I think I think um, we got a little of this in the last time we talked, but it was still kind okay. of you know hush hush and new and not finished. What can you tell us? Uh, this is a, a fun sort of coming of age uh, rom-com with slasher movies. And it's uh, <laughs> set in Florida, South Florida, where I used to live. I worked, my first job was actually the Palm Beach Papers. Uh. And, uh, and I spent a lot of time roaming Florida and meeting a lot of interesting characters. So it's set in Palm Beach, West Palm Beach and the Everglades. And it's kind of a fun adventure about death and no one actually dies. So it's going to be fun. Okay. <laughs> I wish that were like, true about Carl Hyacinth's books, but uh, they're not. You know, it's interesting. Not I, really know. a Carl, even though I'm a Carl fan, uh, it's not really good necessarily, but it's a Florida, it's Florida. So, you know, Carl Hyacinth kind of owns Florida. So I'm happy to be in his company. I just, uh, you know, I just did this interview last, a couple days ago, really, with Michael Connolly. And, uh, oh, right. I read, yeah. you, I read that. You know? Yeah. Well, there's so much Florida still in him. You know, he was here for so long. He still lives in Tampa half the year. But, the, you know, even though the, those books are set in L.A. or, you know, the usual environs of good old terrible What's L.A., it? there's, there's, there's little something, little. there's a little Harry Cruz in him. And if he's yeah. one of his journalism teachers at University of Florida. There's a little bit of Hyacinth in him, you know. 
There's a lot of mm-hmm. Elmore Leonard and all those kind of typewriters and stuff. Uh-huh. But, yeah. but he was like, you know, it was, I hadn't talked to Michael in 20 years and it was just like yesterday. You know, it's like he's still kind of a Florida guy. He's very easy to talk to. We've been with him a couple of times uh, in recent years and he and I both covered the LAPD. I covered LAPD for the Associated Press. So we get together and start talking about police chiefs and cops and the cop shop in LA. You were in LA for a while, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I was in LA for a couple of years. And, and I ended up just covering a lot of cop stuff because there's a lot of cop stuff in LA to cover, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, we got- it's, really, it's fun watching a show too, because having lived in LA, oh, you know. We recognize all, where the, they are. all the settings. I know the neighborhood, I know the style of houses. Yeah. I know Bangle it, you know, fun. Well, I love that about him that he just, uh, you know, was covering the crime beat and cops in LA and, and, you know, it's like, he was like, now I know enough about this to where I can, I can start, you know, make, making stuff up and seeing what happens. <laughs> and you know, here we are 34 yeah. books later or something. It's, yeah, it's he's funny a lot of that too. He's he's got, he, I know he talks to a lot of cops and prosecutors and, yeah. and uh, but he also knows his stuff very well. And, uh, Brilliant guy. And it, you made me think of, uh, when you talk about all the sites and stuff. Now, Paul, I, you, you were in Ybor City in Tampa in the 80s. Right. You, mm-hmm. were, you were off being fabulous and wonderful in New Orleans, I think. Well, they, uh, I, where was I? Yes, actually. Yeah, uh, well, I'm talking about what they made the film Cocoon in here, which Alabama. I wrote about today. New Orleans. Not, New the Ron Howard movie Cocoon, which I wrote about today. Was I that, just saw that story. Well, the, the thing was that so many people have written in already you know, on, on the, the various old St. Petersburg sites saying, you know, I watched that recently. And it was so great to see the locations, you know, to see, and, and be, what you were talking about, about LA, where you see it on TV and, oh, I know this, mm-hmm. I know that, you know, and it's very much like that. From, and it, it is kind of like a time capsule, even though the nursing home is on Pendles Point and the pool next to the nursing home is out on Bogusiega. <laughs> right. <laughs> the magic of all. Coliseum never looked better than in that movie. It, the Coliseum looks exactly the same today. Yeah. That, that, there's this old photo that I used in my PowerPoints of the, the opening of the Skyway dinner dance in 54. And, and, and it looks exactly the same as it does in Cocoon and it does today. Um, another great segue. I wanted to talk with you about the Palladium. Sure. Um, I'm not. I'm not exactly sure what I what I want to ask. Other than, uh, is there any kind of end to this inside? I mean, you're, you're, the next shows you have still on the calendar are in mid July. Is that like a safe uh, a safe bet, or is that like we they sort turn- of left them on the calendar because we're optimistic? But I I don't really have an opening date uh, in my you know the performing arts live concert business. Uh, a lot of people are talking about nothing coming back till 2021. I think we may be back in some form uh, in August or September, uh, upstairs, maybe doing our down nightclub type shows upstairs. Uh, mm-hmm. But we've still got a long way to go. We are, we're getting ready for whatever happens. We're getting ticket scanners, which we never had. Uh, we're coming all the protocols of how you keep people safe. We're adding Plexi to our windows at the box office and the concessions. Uh, we're going to seat people social distanced upstairs. So I think we'll be back sometime late summer or, you know, very early fall. I, I'm going to ask you straight out. Are you scared? I mean, that's, that's, that's your livelihood. Yeah. It's, it's a lot worse for a lot of other people in the business. It's a lot worse for our performers. Uh, the good thing about the Palladium is we've had, uh, I've been there 12 years, we've had really 10 incredible, exceptional years, and yeah. we've been able to sort of establish a base. So my staff is still employed. Uh, I think we're around for the long haul. We've got a, uh, you know, we've got an endowment that was set up by the Huffs yeah. uh, when we started. So I'm not, while it's horrible and I really miss what we're doing and we're, we've written off a lot of business, we're not like so many of them. I, we're not in danger of not being here when, whenever the world opens up. So that's what's kept me sleeping at night. And the fact that all my folks are still, uh, you know, getting paid. Well, I mean, does it, does it, it work? Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, well, does it help in some way that, that you're associated with the school? You know, is that like a safety blanket? Like, well, you're not, uh, you're not an independent operation, in other words. It, what's nice about being with the school, I mean, there's a lot of great things about it, but we have to make our own budget. The team is responsible. There's that we don't get the college doesn't write, pay our salaries or pay any of my operational oh, okay. budget. So we the palladium has to depend on on its. We're supposed to break even every year, and we've actually done way better than that. <clears throat> but you know, I kind of had a rainy day fund bill, and it's raining. <laughs> Boy, what an honest statement. What's what's next for you guys? I mean, what, once we get out of this, you got that that round the world trip that you always wanted to take. Yes. <laughs> you know they say in improv, always say yes. Yes! Yes! <laughs> no, the thing that was Bob Devin Jones routine. Always say yes. <laughs> the, thing we, the thing we've been working on that we're really excited about, aside from the book and movies and all this stuff is, uh, and we didn't invite them tonight because it's only a tight little window, but <clears throat> my and friend Robin Sibacow well. and his wife, uh, both great <laughs> musicians. She's a singer. He's one of the best guitarists in the world. He's world-class guitarist. And we're doing a, a quartet with them, two female singers, Robin and I playing guitar and piano and four vocals. And we're just having a gas of a time doing it. Uh, once we got through our quarantine so we could get together, yeah. uh, we're getting together every Friday night and playing and we think we'll have a show when we come out of this thing. Well, what's kind of, that's so fascinating because, and, and you know, the, the old cliches you keep hearing people talk about it. Well, it's like, we've, we've rediscovered the art of conversation. You know, <laughs> you're making music in the parlor with your friends, you know? We're making, it's true. That's what, what we've been doing. And and they walk like by, the they box. hear us playing. You know, yeah. So mm -hmm. you're thinking that this man, oh, I should ask you about, you know, the, the, the combo that you have. And, and you know, it, you still talking to those guys? It's like, yeah, once we're out of here, we're still going to do this. I had actually put uh, the, the Blue Roses band. Blue Roses, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had we were, I'd taken a break. We had done that for like 12 years. And uh, so we took a break, and I was doing a book talk, and I wanted to do some songs. And my friend Robin came up and played with me, and we decided this is the best thing. We were having so much fun. So that's kind of where I'm going right now is with this quartet. This new and, quartet. What kind of music is it? What are you doing? Oh, go ahead. We're doing a little thing for the American Songbook. You heard that grooving song we did last time. Yeah. It's just our favorite songwriters. So, so do, do, oh, you know what? Songs so, he like. What? Songs we like. Songs I like. <laughs> well, 60, that's the best way to do it. Akarak, El, Elvis Costello, some modern stuff, some of my stuff. So wait, it's wait, wait, wait. What, what Costello that's songs are you doing? Uh, you'll, you'll like this. Every day I write the book. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that that He's songs. been working really hard on that. We would play it for you, but they're not here. So. And you should really read the lyrics of that song. They're quite, uh, what a message. Oh, he's a And, he's and also, a he's song. reprising, oh, sorry. No, he's reprising a Pop-Tart song as well. For my old band, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 One of the most Pop-Tart fans out there who are like, in the band back, man. No, it's fun. It's fun. Oh, yeah. So that's, 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 that's what's coming next. Eugenia, any, any plans for, um, I guess you guys, you still be involved in radio theater when you can and the other things that you yeah. do. Every I mean, time I um, turn around in this town, usually I hear your voice coming out of headphones on tours. And right. I saw the that. Oh, we're about to start recording the 2019 murals for the next, you know, for the mural tour for last year's murals. Oh, and yeah, because I noticed, I, I, I was on there today. I did a thing with Janae today, and I noticed that it wasn't, didn't exist for 2019 yet. And, and correct, correct. We're hoping, we're pitching a project that maybe we can um, have little video snippets of the 2020 mural, murals, which, so we'll see, cross your fingers on that. Yeah. But speaking of uh, audio and Zoom and everything, I had mentioned t these tiny plays that I've been doing, they're audio plays. We've been doing it for, we're in our second week and Sheila Cowley is writing the audio play. It's a play for children. <laughs> They're like little bedtime stories, three different ones, a different one each night. And it starts at 7.30. Actually, you could 
Tune in at 7.30. It's through and the Studio 620. Studio 620. So if you go on the Studio 620 website, I mean, face, Facebook page, Facebook you can page. see the number to call. And it, at 7.40, call the number. If it's busy, keep on calling. And then all of a sudden, you're going to hear this beautiful soundscape designed by Matt Cowley. And yeah. then you'll hear actors performing live on the phone. It's just audio. This cute 15-minute tiny play. So you're, you're doing this too. Before last, I was Marcel, the, the, huh? Yeah, you're the, la, Well, so yeah. night before last, I was Marcel, the mama bird, and, and trying to get little Benny bird out of the nest. I, it, it's so much fun. So I encourage people to do that. So speaking of radio theater. There we so go. Stu Studio 620 Facebook page. Yeah. Anything yeah. else? I, we're fun. almost out of time, and I know you are going to grace us with another tune. What else would you like to tell me about? No, I was saying, speaking of radio theater, uh, we lost one of the great talents of St. Petersburg, one of our dearest friends, yeah. not to anything related to COVID, uh, to other illness, but uh, Rich Rice was a professor of theater at uh, Eckerd College. He's oh. done amazing stuff in, in the theater world, mm -hmm. and he was one of our co-conspirators with Radio Theater Project. His wife started it. And his wife started it, yeah. and uh, we lost... His wife was Mimi. And the other day, we one of those guys, he played my sidekick in the No Berlin episodes. So we're going to do a song for him, if you don't mind, to close so it out. That was, Rich Rice. He was Mimi's husband. Is what he's yeah. Mimi's husband. Well, and a wonderful, weird. wonderful man and a really let, real talent in the theater world. So let's do a song. We sorry, miss him. Sorry, no. So let's, yeah. let's send him off with a nice song, guys. And thanks for being here tonight. This is for you, Mimi. Bill, thank you so much. And, and this is for so Mimi much. and for Rich. Yeah. I can remember it. The way you wear your hat, the way you sip your tea, the memory of all that. No, no. beautiful thank you guys we Thanks will so see much you for having us on the other side of all this huh thank you we'll see you soon bye